Welcome, and thank you for joining me for America Needs Fatima series, Stories of the Angels. In this series, we will be exploring the incredible angelic encounters found within scriptures, transcripts, stories of the saints, and more. Join us in this exploration of the mysteries surrounding God's most faithful ministers, the admirable creatures we call the angels. In today's installment of our Angel series, we will share the incredible story of St. Gemma Galgani's life and her unique connection to her guardian angel. In the late 19th to early 20th century, a remarkable young woman lived in the village of Camgliano, Italy, in Tuscany. Her life was brief, but marked by angelic purity, unwavering devotion to Our Lady, and an extraordinary relationship with her guardian angel. From a young age, St. Gemma exhibited signs of holiness. At age four, she knelt in prayer before an image of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, utterly oblivious to the world around her. Even as a child, she aspired to sainthood and wrote with determination, Despite everything and everyone, I will be a saint. Our Lord ratified that wish by saying to her, In a few years you will be a saint by my doing. You will work miracles and be raised to the honor of the altars. But despite her early devotion, St. Gemma's life was not without hardship. She faced the loss of her mother at the tender age of seven. Her father went bankrupt shortly after and died, leaving the family broken up, but her faith only deepened. St. Gemma's guardian angel remained her constant companion throughout these trials, guiding and protecting her and playing a pivotal role in her spiritual journey. St. Gemma was also a firm believer in attending daily Mass. Her guardian angel was not the only thing helping her on her spiritual journey. The incredible graces she received from the Mass helped strengthen her faith and bolster her devotion to our Lord. We can imitate her faith by taking part in the sacrament of the Church. If you want to strengthen your faith with the graces a real Catholic Mass can bring you, consider joining our Child of Mary group. One of the gifts you will receive as a Child of Mary is having a daily Mass prayed for you and any intentions you send us. Intention for our liturgy today for our Mass. America needs Fatima's children of Mary. And especially, uh, we offer this divine liturgy for Lucy Cosgro, for Matthew Long, for Mary Wyman, for Lisa Gibson, for Sarah. As soon as you sign up to become a child of Mary, you will receive a subscription to Crusade Magazine, a beautiful metal lapel pen featuring the image of the pilgrim statue of Our Lady. And most importantly, your name and intentions will be sent immediately to a local priest who will offer a full Catholic Mass for you every morning, 365 days a year. Click the link in the description below to sign up today. Okay, back to St. Gemma and her guardian angel. St. Gemma found a spiritual mentor in Father Germano of St. Stanislas, a virtuous priest who would guide her through her last years when she was lavished with supernatural experiences. Under Father Germano's experience, Gemma wrote them all down, and the priest published her autobiography only four years after her death, and her guardian angel was a prominent figure in these accounts. Gemma once recounted, Jesus does not allow me to be alone for a moment, but make sure that my guardian angel is always in my company. The latter told her, I will be your sure guide and inseparable companion. In her innocence, she thought that everyone could see their guardian angels, especially little children. Only gradually did she realize that this was not the case. Sometimes she saw her angel adoring God. At other times, he stretched his hands over her as a token of protection, defending her against the devil's attacks. He knelt beside her, suggesting points for meditation, or sat by her, giving her excellent advice. He often emphasized the importance of obedience and detachment from worldly possessions. Our Lord wanted her to be completely detached from all things. 
When she went to the Archiepiscopal Palace to receive a gold medal she earned in the catechetical course, her aunt tried to dress her better. Gemma agreed to wear a little chain with a cross and a gold watch, a souvenir of her mother. When she returned home and was about to change her clothes, she saw the guardian angel beside her, looking at her sternly, saying, Remember that the spouse of a crucified king should be adorned with no other jewels than his thorns and cross. Gemma's immediate response was to rid herself of worldly ornaments and vowed to live solely to please Jesus. And her guardian angel encouraged her to meditate daily on the passion of Christ, deepening her connection to Jesus. Gemma reported, He sat next to me and said, Why do you give Jesus this grief for not meditating on his passion every day? She recognized that this was true and remembered she meditated on the passion only on Thursdays and Fridays. He told her, You must do it daily. Don't forget. As you can tell, Gemma's close relationship with her guardian angel transcended the ordinary, and she often treated him as a trusted companion. Gemma never went out alone. So, when she had no one from her family to go out with her, her guardian angel offered to be her visible companion. She was so familiar with him that she even asked him to take a letter to her spiritual director and bring the one he had for her. But Gemma saw more than only her guardian angel. She was favored with the stigmata of the passion and had frequent ecstasies with visions of Our Lord, Our Lady, and Saint Gabriel. Her devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary was a particularly tender one. She affectionately referred to Mary as Mama and sought her intercession in times of spiritual struggle. Our Lady, in turn, appeared to Gemma as the sorrowful mother, sharing details of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Gemma passed away on Holy Saturday in 1903 at the age of 25. Her remarkable journey toward sanctity led to her canonization as a saint by Pope Pius XII in 1940. Thank you for joining me. I leave you with this parting prayer and encourage you to repeat and share it as often as possible. My God, I believe, I adore, I trust, and I love Thee. I beg pardon for all those that do not believe, do not adore, do not trust, and do not love Thee. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and return for the next one as I discover and share another incredible angelic story. We want your soul to receive as many graces as possible. Consider joining our special Child of Mary group. We have a full Catholic Mass prayed every day for each and every one of our children of Mary. Click your screen now to have a daily Mass prayed in your name.